Hello everyone, I'm Yunqing, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, project um, fitting and then uh, functional forms on QM energies and forces. So um, this is a huge dilemma that the protein molecular simulation uh, community has been facing for decades is that MM is very fast, but not that reliable. QM is considered as the gold standard, but uh, prohibitively slow. So recent years, there is a, a trend that uh, people are using symmetry functions like Baller and Pellerino to summarize the local chemical environment of atoms and come up with the so-called machine learning uh, uh, force field, machine learning potential models or machine learning force field, which is somehow uh, not that, not that, uh, uh, which is somehow has an accuracy that's close to QM, but slightly faster than QM. But still, uh, it's still around 2,000 times, if not more, slower than MM models, especially in solvated system. And there is a huge design space between MM potentials and ML potentials. If you look at the pros and cons of the MM potentials and ML potentials, then I guess we can agree here that whatever merits for a molecular force field comes from its, function, its simplistic functional forms. So for example, if you have all you have is, uh, is bonded, non bonded, and bonded is basically harmonics which, uh, or some other polynomials, then it is extremely fast to sample and you can encode a lot of your beliefs in that. So for example, if you, if you believe that uh, when you have a non bonded interaction and you separate the atoms apart to a uh, in enough distance, then the energy should degrade to zero, then you can encode that belief in your functional forms. Whereas all the uh, benefits from ML potential comes from, uh, we believe, optimization uh, from its optimization strategy. To be more specific, you can use uh, this kind of optimization strategy used by machine learning communities, namely backpropagation to rapidly train your uh, neural network to come up with uh, more and more accurate models. So is it possible if we can combine the merits of MM and ML potential? And of course, uh, this is hardly anything new. And it's basically the workforce of uh, the entire Open Force Field Consortium, which is force balance developed by Li Ping. Uh, there's only one problem or maybe two uh, for this wonderful scheme is that although you optimize very aggressively the force field parameters, you're not optimizing the typing scheme of force field parameters. And this means that you need to start with a decent enough force field. So uh, a lot of the force field, especially small molecule force field that uh, people are using right now, started from development in 1990s. So it is of our interest to ask the question, is it possible to optimize atom typing and the parameters at the same time? Uh, before we dig into the details, let's just clarify a little bit on the uh, nomenclature of different aspects of force field. So uh, the, the, the final energy, the energy that we care about, which could uh, give us a lot of information, in, uh, including the behavior of the molecular system. Of course, we can take the derivatives to get the uh, uh, forces uh, comes from parameters as well as coordinates. So uh, the parameters comes from uh, including bond, angle, torsion, non-bonded types. Uh, parameters comes from uh, bond, angle, torsion, non-bonded types, which comes from atom types. And the, we call the process of translating a molecular graph into these types and further into the parameters atom typing and the rest force field parameterization. And in this project, we're wondering whether we can replace the uh, current atom typing scheme, which is based on uh, basically looking at the table. Uh, can we switch that to, based on, uh, to be based on graph neural networks? So there is a wish list that we hope to achieve by the end of the project. So we want to know whether graph nets can fit atom types, whether it can fit atom bond angle torsion types, and therefore parameters. 
and whether we can reproduce the same set of parameters given the sufficient MD trajectory. And if we, we, we prove that we can do very well on MD energies and forces, then we can move on to QM, which we really care about, uh, whereas MM is just uh, no more than a sanity check. And finally, uh, such neural parameterization schemes afford us the ability to expand the complexity of the functional form. So for example, we can uh, include term, terms that are used in MMFF or uh, some other class for force field that have been proven to uh, increase the thinness between MM and QM, but were too difficult to parameterize if parameterized manually, that is to say to put in a, a huge table. So speaking of huge table, let's look at uh, one of the most classic uh, huge tables for atom typing scheme. So this is just a few columns of uh, GAF. This is GAF1, I believe, which uh, is published in 2004, but the development effort goes well back into 1990s, if not earlier. If you analyze the grammar of all these atom typing rules, then you will realize that it is no more complex than uh, combining node attributes, number of neighbors, and neighbor attributes all together. So interestingly, uh, it is obvious to, to see that these, uh, these grammar could be realized by a, a graph kernel called weisfeld lehman test, which is basically a uh, tree expansion uh, heuristic so for example, if you look at the cyan node here, uh, I don't think you can see my cursor, but anyhow, if you look at the cyan node here, then you expand the trees uh, into green, 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 and you further expand the, the green nodes into green, cyan, green, and green, cyan, green, and the, the, the middle green node could be expanded to uh, three, whereas the uh, cyan nodes could be uh, expanded as two. So this uh, procedure has been used to distinguish between different nodes in a graph or different graphs uh, for, for a very long time. And last year, there is a wonderful paper published by Shui et al. in MIT that consists of a GitHub repo for four lines of code that proved that Weisfeld and Lehman test could be approximated by graph nets. So uh, what we have here is that graph nets could be as powerful as Weisfeld and Lehman test, whereas Weisfeld and Lehman test can almost perfectly approximate atom typing. Naturally, we can hypothesize that graph nets can approximate atom typing. And if you want to put an attribute on that, uh, there is actually a corresponding relationship between graph nets with n layer and Weisfeld Lehman test with n steps, and Weisfeld Lehman test with n steps to atom typing that looks at most n atoms away. So let's test this experimentally. Uh, we just have a very toy ish data set here that consists of a thousand molecules from the zinc data set split it into uh, AD1010 training validation test. And we used an off the shelf graph neural network models. And if you ignore the 1.5 error rate here, uh, you can say that, okay, maybe GraphNet can do the task of fit atom types perfectly. Then the next question we want to ask is, if you can do the atom types, can you do the bond types and uh, therefore bond parameters? So uh, these are apparently two, two questions that consist of a, an AND operation, which takes one end of the bond and the other, uh, and use an AND operator to, to uh, join them together, as well as a dictionary lookup. So the first half is a uh, bond typing scheme, so to speak, and the second is the parameterization scheme. Because neural networks, all neural networks, this is not even a, a graph convolutional or anything, even if the simplest feed-forward neural networks can do logistic operations. Also, any kind of neural networks can look up a dictionary. So we hypothesize that maybe graph nets can, uh, after do message passing uh, on, the, on the node, maybe can also come up with bond prot types and therefore parameters. Now, there's a, a slight problem here. So after you do the atom message passing, you will come up with latent code for each node, but 
uh, for bound angle and torsion parameters, you necessarily need to combine the latent code of individual atoms into an entity. And uh, meanwhile, we need to uh, respect the symmetry here that there is a, so for example, the order symmetry for bond is that if you name, uh, if you switch to order, you input. So if you, if you input the, uh, blue atom first and red and a red atom next or if you switch daughter this should give you the uh, this should give you the exact same answer because there's a topological symmetry here uh, one of the techniques that we can use is called genesis pooling uh, this huge chunk of math here basically says that i don't care what kind of symmetry you want to to uh, respect one simplest way of pull things together that is expressive is that just enumerate all of these permutations and sum them up together. So this is what we did. So we have a feed, fewer, a feed forward neural network that operates on the concatenation of all the enumeration of permutations and then add them up together to come up with a latent representation of bond angles and torsions. And from there, we determine the parameters. And uh, it's, it's, it's not doing too bad, although there's still uh, some, uh, although there's still some error, uh, the, the R square is generally over 0.9. There is a, another version of uh, the scheme that we tested, uh, which is which involves hierarchical message passing that can do slightly better, but this is ten times more expensive, so it did not proceed uh, with this heuristic. Okay, again, if you tolerate that uh, 0.9 R square, you can say that, okay, it seems that fitting atom bound angle and torsion parameters could be achieved by graph nets. Then next, we move on to whether we can reproduce this set of parameters if you have sufficient enough uh, MD trajectories. So this is, again, a sanity check for uh, before we go to uh, fitting QM energies because we, we know the answer here. We, we know that the model now is expressive enough. It is just a, a matter of the, pro, uh, the optimization process. So uh, again, this is a toy-ish task. We selected 100 molecules from any data set uh, for training and 24 tests. We parameterized the system by open force of tools using Smirnoff. Uh, and we draw samples from a MM simulation at 400K, and we feed those energies and those snapshots into a graph net and try to see whether, uh, it, can, uh, whether it can reproduce the energies first. So uh, it seems that our MSC of the predicted and the reference energy is um, around uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 K copper mole for training and slightly larger for uh, test set. However, when you look at the parameters, it seems that the only parameter that the model can reproduce with some confidence is the uh, equilibrium bound lens. So this has something to do with the the very rugged landscape of the, the optimization process, and we've shown that this is not a issue of the expre expressiveness, because if you train it directly on um, parameters, then you can get a perfect energy, whereas it is the, the rugged landscape endowed by the complex functional form that is increasing the uh, difficulty of training here. So this is still a, a problem that we're, we're trying to overcome. Uh, but we were also, uh, trying to make do with this kind of accuracy that we have and move on to QM. Now, if you train this on a, 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 QM, uh, a QM energy data set, then there are more challenges that are uh, added. So usually, if you have something like a QM9 or a ANI data set, then the dynamic range for your model needs to be very, very large because the energies usually uh, sometimes span from negative few thousand to somewhere near zero. So you want a, uh, 
very high R score as well as a very high RMSC because in order to make the model useful at a lo local region, then uh, even if you get a general trend, it will still, it can still uh, make some errors at the very local uh, scale. So if you look at the scatter plot, this is just some random uh, experiment that I did on QM90 is that if you give this plot to any machine learning person, they will tell you that, okay, this looks perfect. But still the RMC of, of this specific experiment is greater than 10K Kalper mole, which makes the, the potential energy uh, model basically unusable. Uh, so I, I guess what we need to do here is we need to do more experiments on uh, molecular mechanics to make sure the optimization process works smoothly. Uh, this is ju just another example to, to show that the uh, loss landscape, the, the training curve looks uh, very smooth, but in order to achieve a uh, RMSE, that is actually usable for a potential energy model, there is still some work to be done. Uh, another thing worth mentioning here is that when fitting a MM model or a MM-like model to a QM energy, then we also, apart from predicting uh, the, the bond non-bonded terms, we necessarily also need to predict a, a offset uh, because the, even if you, if you count all the atom offset, uh, you still, there is still a part of QM energy that is not explained. Uh, so you still have to predict per molecule offset for each molecule. Uh, it is kind of well known that you cannot perfectly reproduce MM energies using uh, traditional class one force field. So uh, what we're doing now is also to expanding the uh, to expanding the, the functional forms of the force field uh, so that it will achieve a, a better fitness with regard to uh, QM energies and forces. But again, this is made easier by the uh, neuralized parameterization scheme. So uh, one of the things that we can do is to follow the guidelines for a class two force field. Uh, if you look at such a, a formulation, you will realize that the first few terms is no more than just a, a higher order polynomial for other bonded terms. And we can also add bond-bond coupling, angle-angle coupling, bond-angle coupling, torsion bond coupling, and torsion angle coupling as well, torsion angle-angle coupling. So uh, we, we can easily put all these coupling terms, we can squeeze them into uh, the high, the the hyper nodes that we introduced before. So I have a, a TensorFlow implementation of this and uh, now the ballpark of the RMSC is around 5k call per mole trend on QC archive data. But this is still a work in progress where we try to further lower uh, that, uh, that, that error. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, thank everybody in, in Codera Lab uh, who helped me with this project and uh, thank you for your time.